Hello, good, good evening, everyone. Welcome to all of you for today's session. Students, just let me know whether you people can hear me. You have to respond to me during the session. Yes. Over here. Yes. And there might be some people who may not be able to listen to me. There might be some persons who are unable to hear me for them. Good. All right. All right, now. So if you are, yes. If you are, yes. Just focus here. Yes. So this is the option with you people if there is a problem. Now, today is the first day of the class and a number of people uh, they are going to use this software for the first time. And rather, I don't know, majority of you are uh, going to attend an online class. So don't worry, don't even open your mic and even open your mic as well. Yes, so you can even open your mic and talk to me, ask the question, or you can send a message in the chat box as well. Yes. Now, I hope now everyone is connected. I hope now everyone is, there is one person who is facing some problem. Uh, just let me check now. Okay, now let us proceed. I hope everyone is okay. So uh, students, our, yes, subject, financial management. F9. F9 financial management is basically the subject. Let us talk about it. So then this subject, financial management, is basically, uh, it is becoming a headache for the student in level two. Now, why, why, what are the reasons we will be talking about that in the upcoming session in detail? A few of the things I will tell you today. The financial management paper is basically, it is, it has a bit linkage with F2. You have studied F2 costing, right? It has a bit linkage with that. Now, so students, but whatever linkage is there, you need not to be worried because whatever topic will be here, we will be reading, studying, discussing that in detail. As like that, you are going to study it for the first time. Now, so students, financial management subject is 
if we talk about the course content, if we talk about the course content, syllabus content, so we can distribute your syllabus into four, uh, five major areas. The first one is investment appraisal. A major area, very important area from the exam point of view. You know that investment appraisal? The, the second is, that is business finance. Business finance, I mean, again, one major section, a big section of your syllabus, which includes that the, if a business needs finance, what are the sources available and how to calculate cost of the each school, weighted average cost of capital, and number of theories are there. We will be discussing, of course, in detail. And the third is, that is working capital management. You have studied inventory management in your previous studies, inventory, EOQ model, etc. But here, there are more details. Other aspects, finance aspects we will be discussing, inventory management, cash management, creditors management, and uh, you know that uh, debtors management. So, and other aspects of working capital we will, will also be discussing. The fourth section of the syllabus is, that is business valuation. Business valuation, that how to value a business, a running business, if you are going to acquire a running business, what are the ways to calculate its value? What are the options to learn that how to, if we, for example, if we want to sell our business, similarly, we need to learn how to calculate its value. So business valuation techniques are there. And the next is risk management. If a business is involved in the in international operations, so currency rate fluctuation. If the business has different uh, assets like uh, loans it has given, you know that if business or it has invested and are seeing the interest, so interest rate may fluctuate. How to manage that interest? So this is a full section on it. And the last, which is not a section, but I consider it a section, that is theoretical part, chapters there are, which is financial markets, which is some part of economics and some other theoretical topics as well. Some other theoretical topics as well. Now the problem over here is majority students who come for F9, who go for F9, they consider F9 is, what they consider? They consider it is a calculation-based paper. So this should be clear from the day first that financial management, yes, F9, it is not calculation only. Yes, calculations are there, but there is too much theoretical discussion. There is too much uh, area, big area, which is about theories. And in your paper, I'm going to discuss the paper format in a few minutes. In your exam, if you pick your past exam papers, and the based on feedback from the students, exam paper is around, it is around 50% on calculations and 
Yes. So your Yeah, just a minute, please. Just a minute, please. Now, now you can hear me, I think. Tell me, can you hear me? Good. Now, it should be okay now. Okay. So, students, this uh, I told you that fifty percent is each part, the syllabus. Fifty percent each is there. So you have to prepare both areas from the day first, from the both aspects. Now. And the failure of the students in the failure of the students in F9 is not the calculation based area, that is theoretical area. Means they spend time on calculation, but they don't bother to spend. 50% of that time, for example, if you are spending five hours on the calculation, so two hours are required for to prepare theory, the letter relevant, and then you can pass the paper. But students don't spend. And one more thing, one more thing, that in the exam, there are the exam techniques, some uh, which students do not follow. Of course, those exam techniques, I will be discussing when the proper time will come. Now. The subject has the following, uh, you see here, format, exam. Here is the exam format. So section A is the compulsory 20 marks MCQs, 40 marks. 20 cross two is equal to 40. The section B, that is three compulsory 10 mark question. 30 marks. These are MTQs. Means these 10 marks are each question has five further short questions. Questions cross three means 15 questions are there. So 30 marks are there. And two compulsory 15 mark case studies 30. These are constructive response, scenario-based question, which you have to solve. Now you see here, 70 marks are on theoretical discussion, on the MCQs, which are, and you know, the calculations as well now. So these are the 70 marks. And 30 marks is on the scenario, scenario-based question. Now, so that's how we will proceed through the F9 preparation. Let me tell you one thing. After two weeks, I will be extending duration of my class. For example, by 30 minutes. I will extend and I'll, of course it will be decided to be done by the mutual uh, consensus in the class, the timing. Okay, we can do 10 minutes, 15 minutes start earlier, 10 to minutes start and later. It will be like that. Okay. So why why I have been sending? Because we have to do too much practice. Practice, practice, and practice. So this is the my task. That first of all, I will be discussing with you a topic, an area of syllabus. You will be preparing that conceptually. Remember conceptual clarity. 
when you do reading of notes in depth, attending the class and noting down the points, and are you after revising that? This is the first right step. If you are not going to do that, you will be facing problem in the MCQs and MDQs. And let me tell you, MCQs and MDQs are challenging. I'm saying challenging, not impossible. So in order to tackle that challenge, in order to face that challenge, we must prepare all these things properly. I hope you have got my point now. So we have to do a lot of practice. I will be giving you my notes and all the practice material which is required to prepare for the exam. I will be providing you all that. So you people need not to be worried at all uh, about the study material. Okay, so everything will be provided to you. So students, uh, any question anyone so far? Any question anyone so far? All right. All right, now. So let us proceed further. Let us proceed. So students, as I told you, the syllabus areas over here, here, yes, here they are. This section C, your examiner says, normally three areas normally, not mandatory. Normally means there are more than 70 to 80 percent chance that which areas are going to be tested here? The areas are going to be tested in the section C, scenario which question you see here. Section C. So these three areas. These three areas are most, you, know, you see, it doesn't mean they're not going to, going to be tested in section A or B. Yes, they will be tested in section A and B as well. But in the section C, questions are expected. This is what your examiner says. In section C, question will be normally that will be expected to be from these areas. Yes, but can, these can also be tested. They are the most likely. Yes, most likely. They're most likely to be there. Now, let us proceed further. Students, in the financial management, when we talk about financial management, so actually the subject wants you to learn finance, this formula if we provide it to you in the exam, this present value table, annuity table will be provided. Yes. So, yes. So, let us proceed. So, students, a finance manager, finance manager, has to perform three types of job. Number one, that is financial planning for the business. That what will be the cash required in the future? What will the funds required? What will be the source of funds? How they will be obtained? how the project will run. And that is financial control. Financial control. That meant then it has to be controlled. That what was actually planned, things are going in the same direction as per planning. 
or they are being devi there is deviation if there is deviation and things are moving away from the plan then how to manage that how to tackle that what corrective action so monitoring is required and so that things can be controlled corrective action to be taken so financial controls and the third is decision making finance financial management decisions have to be taken what are the uh, the three decisions the first one is investment decision investment appraisal that whether the company should make an investment or not investment decision in the first thing investment appraisal we will study how to do it then the second is financing decision which source of finance is suitable for the company which source of finance is beneficial for the company financing decisions have to be made and the third is and the third is that is dividend decision a very important dividend decisions again we have to study all these things thing. dividend decision that how much a dividend should be paid whether it should be increased reduced from the previous year or it should be at the same level so what so different considering different factors we have to make a decision yes now so financial management decisions have to be made so three parts three things to be done so then for a commercial company the company which exists for the sake of earning profit we know that what are the shareholders shareholders objective to invest we know that shareholders objective to invest is one objective what is that can anyone tell me why shareholders invest in the company or in the businesses yes can you tell me exactly return dividend business business expansion is linked to that yes return so shareholder wants to increase their wealth they want to increase their wealth so the role of finance manager is the same to work for the maximization of wealth of shareholder so what is the role to work for maximization of shareholders wealth this is the role so shareholder share shareholder expectation are there now shareholders wealth how it is increased how it is increased my question from you is how is it increased yes how shareholders wealth is increased can you please tell me yes please can you please tell me okay good very good to work on correct investment making good investment decisions shares okay various question and of course you people are thinking well in on the right direction i appreciate that yes increasing the exactly very well who is 
N5379. What is the name? And N5379.17. Yajna. Okay, Yajna. Very well done. Very well done. So you see here, so you people have responded my question in a wonderful way. So shareholders' wealth is increased by two sources. The one is, that is, that is dividend. When they get dividend, their wealth is increased. Return they are getting. Second is increase in share price. I have purchased a share for ten dollar, and after one year, share price is twelve dollar. So my wealth has increased. Plus, I got one dollar dividend. So two dollar increase in share price, and one. So my wealth is increased by three dollars. So shareholders wealth is increased by two ways, by the dividend and the second is increase in shareholder, uh, sorry, in, in, in share price. Now, next, let us proceed. So we can learn one thing over here. A very uh, good thing we have learned that is a ratio is total shareholders return TSR. What is return? You said dividend they are getting dividend plus increase in share price. For example, when I purchased a share, its price was P0. After one year, sorry, after one year, it is, after one year, it is P1. So P0 and P1. This is, so in, this is increase in share price. So P1 minus P0. Increase in share price. This is the total return in the one year I got. On which investment? Investment I made, that is P0. This is the investment. I purchased share for this. This increase in share value and this dividend I got. So if I calculate this ratio for this, so dividend is $1 plus $2 divided by 10. So it is equal to 0.3. It means 30% total shareholder return. Is this clear? This, this ratio is clear to everyone. Total shareholders return. Tell me please everyone. Is it clear? Good. Now. Now, P0 is, uh, yes, I can explain, I can explain, I can explain. You see here, P0 is current share price. P1 is share price after one year. Current or initial. Of share price after one year. Yes, D is equal to dividend.
So you see here, we have done the same. This was 12 minus 10. P naught is 10 here. Now, this is after one year. So difference is two plus one. Another example. For example, initial share price on 1st January, share price 2920. Share price was, for example, 125 rupees. And on 1st Jan, 2021 share price is 135 rupees and then dividend D, dividend paid at year end, that is equal to 10 rupees, that is 10 rupees. Now, so we have to calculate total shareholder return. So at the beginning, share price is P0. It is P1 and it is D. Now simply putting the formula, figures in the formula, total shareholder return is equal to B10 plus P1. 135 minus 125 divided by initial investment was P naught, 125. So 20 divided by 125. So we can calculate its solution as well. Sixteen percent. I hope this point is clear to everyone. Now, good. So another example we will solve, but that we will solve in the Excel sheet. Because in the exam, here is the exam, uh, uh, example. In the exam, we have to, what we have to do, we have to solve, we will be having exam platform. Exam platform with us, we will be having. So uh, just a minute, please. Uh, better to practice on this as well. From the first day, 11th June, I, what I will be doing after each class, I will be sharing with you people the working of the file as well. Within 24 hours, it will be shared automatically. It will be, I, what I will do, I will provide you a link of a drive. And on that link, I will be updating on a regular basis, these documents as well. So you can access that even. So 11th, it was not June, it is January. Okay, now. So come to the question. The question is here in front of us. Just read it once. Exactly, these notes will be provided to you people. You will provide all the material required to prepare for the exam. Of course. Now, I hope you have gone through it. Now, let us solve it. A shareholder purchased 1,000 shares in SJG company. 
on 1st January at a market price of 2.5 dollar per share. On 31st December, yes, they purchase a share at a market price of this. Recording of the lecture, recording of the lecture. You know what I want from here to say, I don't, I don't want to provide <laughs> because of my experience. Because what happens, you know, I provide videos, but of course that is for a limited period of time, not for our indefinitely. What happens actually, students misuse that flexibility. Then they start missing the classes. They say, we will be getting a recording. So why to attend a class on, online? like class so i can go to the dinner with my friends with some family or some like, like that they start missing the classes unfortunately this is i'm telling you my experience because they think that i we will get recording and unfortunately then they don't watch recording as well because they start missing and what's getting get keep on piling up the work you know that two videos, three videos, four videos, and ultimately they drop the course. So don't take this facility, don't let this facility kill your F9. Okay, I will provide you. Video recording is for the rewatch, not for this, that I am sitting here with friends, so why do I need to go and attend class? I hope you brought up my, my concern. I hope it is clear to you people. Okay? I hope. So this is for everyone. Please, when you are attending class on a regular basis, you get in touch with the lectures. Yes, emergencies are there. I cannot say. You know, emergencies are there and they are genuine concern. And if there is genuine emergency, genuine uh, issue, then of course, you will have access to recording, of course, then you can miss. I hope you got my point. Right? Now. So, let us proceed. So, the first January, the price is this. On the 31st January, the shares have an X dividend market price. 2.82 dollar per share. The dividend paid during the period was 2.7 dollar per share. What is the total shareholder return? And what are the elements of? So elements we can say. What is the element? Dividend. This dividend is one element. The second is capital gain. Increase in the share price. So two are the elements. Now, so students, what we can do is let's see here. Simply 2.5 is the P0 initial price. Example TSR. Yes. Initial price P0. Yes. P0. That is 2.5 dollars. At the year end, price is how much? That is 2.82. Yes, I will explain. Thank you. Thank you for this question. Let me solve it, then I'll explain. X dividend. Okay, I will explain a valid question. So 2.82 is here. I'll explain. Then they said that dividend paid during the year, that is equal to 0.27 per share. 0.27 per share. Now, we know that the formula for 
total shareholder return is equal to d plus p1 minus p0 over p0 we need to apply this formula just see here so total shareholders return just see here equal to yes d dividend plus yes plus p1 minus p0 yes here it is closed divided by p0 is this formula clear to you people how i applied good yes so it is 23.6% total shareholder return here it is now a question is there that they have called x dividend price they said it is x dividend market value i will explain this point what is the meaning of it so then shares of the company they are trading in the market i have purchased share mr hamza he has purchased share at 10 dollar share is with me for 6 7 months company announced a dividend that company will pay 0.5 dollar dividend company announced a announcement company announced on 1st april 1st april i don't know what is problem here yes on 1st april company announced a dividend of dividend of that is 0.5 that we will pay this dividend and dividend has to be paid on 15th april to be paid on 15th april april now just see here on 31st march share was trading at 10 dollar this was the price the time company announced dividend on 1st april that we will give dividend of 0.5 dollar who will be holding this share who will have this share so share price will increase to 10.5 dollar now dividend has been included in the price still because company will pay dividend so share price is increased by that amount so this is called come dividend price this will be called as come dividend price after some time what will happen company will pay dividend dividend payment will done dividend paid price will again fall to 10 dollar this is called x dividend price this is called as x dividend which is without dividend 
Is it clear? Tell me. What I see only a few people respond, but others do not respond. Why? They are angry with me? Okay, now responses must. Good, very good. Very after writing, you can respond. Okay, good. Good. That's the genuine point. Now, let us proceed further. Let us proceed further. Now, earning per share is another term, which is very important from the point of view of investors, shareholders, because earning per share, EPS, EPS is also called Financial target it is one of the financial target of company that they have to at least maintain is earning per share. It is performance measure. Performance measure. Earning per share. Now, how it is calculated? It is calculated. EPS is equal to profit available to shareholders. Let me write there in the board here. Earning per share is equal to profit available to shareholders or attributables available or attributable divided by yes number of shares i'm not saying as per is 33 f7 please do not mix that over here okay now so so number of shares for example this is you see here earning per share earning per share that what company have earned on one share so earning per share what they have earned for one shareholder for one share for example let us solve this example given over here and then I'll explain. They say, Gross Hooper made earning attributable to shareholder this in 20x8. And 8.8 .8 million in 20x9. The company's share capital was 12 million in both years. Calculate EPS. First of all, for 28, okay, right. So profit, 20x8, 20x9, 8.25 million, 8.88 million. This is the profit. And number of shares are 12 million. 
same this is in the both here so earning per share we can calculate very easily profit divided by this simple is that So it is 0 0.74 here, and here it is 0 0.68, 0 0.69, 0 0.69, earning per share. So the first requirement that calculate earning per share for both years. Earning per share for both years, calculate. Second, they said that calculate growth in absolute terms. Growth in absolute terms. Absolute means quantity amount. So what is growth? The difference. That is equal to 0 0.05. This is absolute term increase in EPS from one year to the other. Absolute means amount, quantity, and growth in relative terms. Relative means percentage increase in the a percentage, answer in percentage, relative terms. So you see, this is increase. So this growth, 0 0.05, is the growth divided by this initial cross 100. Absolute growth divided by initial multiplied by 100. So we can calculate. Seven point two percent. Seven point two percent. It is 0 0.05. You see here. Yes. Yes. Now, is it clear? Good. Now, so students, a company is there. So company has financial objective. So financial objectives we had discussed. Company wants company wants EPS growth. Company wants EPS earning per share growth. Company wants that. 
עם פי אסכולות. Now, next, let us proceed. In addition to that, what are other finance objective, financial objectives of the company? What are other financial objectives? What can be? For example, company wants gearing level maintenance, debt equity, gearing level maintenance, that is debt equity ratio. We have to talk a lot about it in the business finance. We have to talk a lot. Yes. So company one can have a, a target of dividend retention. Sorry, uh, sorry, not dividend. Dividend I have to talk. Profit retention. What is it? I will, I will explain a bit. company wants to retain every year, retain out of profit, for example, 50 million. They said, we have to retain it. This amount is needed for growth every year. We will not distribute that. So we need this money. So we have, we will earn sufficient profit. We will pay sufficient dividend and we will retain 50 million profit as well. This may be the financial target, financial objectives of the business. But yes. So about the gearing. About the gearing. What is gearing? Debt to equity ratio. For example, how much percentage of debt should be present in the total capital? They say it should be 30%, 20%, 40%, whatever they decide. They set target and they try to achieve that. Now, so students, remember these all, there may be other financial targets, but the prime importance is of one, two, all others are supporting these two, dividend and product, and that is total shareholder return. We know that. Total shareholder return is there. Now, let us proceed further. So, there may be, but so these are the financial, there may be non-financial targets of the company as well. Non-financial objectives. There may be, for example, some companies exist and they think that we should take care of employees. Welfare of employees. Yes, we need to provide a wonderful working environment. Good job, career progression. Good salaries. We need to provide. We need to develop our staff. We need to promote them. We need to improve them. Possibility is there. And then second is, that is, the second is, there may be customer satisfaction. Customer satisfaction. That we have to provide quality product or service to the customer at Fair cost. We have to facilitate customer. Means quality product, fair price, after sale services. 
for example. Next. Third. The third is suppliers. Responsibility towards suppliers. You see here, these are all stakeholders of the company, suppliers. That we have to look after our suppliers. We will not demotivate them. We will not dissatisfy them. We will timely make payment to our suppliers. Yes, prompt payment. We'll have good relationship. And next is sometimes company exists for a provision of a service. For example, government organization may be there. Electricity supply to the society, to the public. To the public. Government organization, transport system, facility. They're not there to earn profit. They are going to, they are there to facilitate people, providing a service, essential for society. I'm sorry. And the last but not the least, yes. That is sometimes non-profit organization. Or overall, even commercial organization, they work for welfare of society. I will re-explain. Don't you worry. This one, provision of a service. For example, for example, let me tell you. Uh, in my country, the electricity supply is by the government. So government has made a company and that company exists to provide that service. There is no other purpose. They might be earning profits as well, but that is essential. If they are not there, electricity, there will not, not be anyone who is providing electricity. So the purpose is, for example, transport company. They are there earning profit, but they are providing a good service to the society as well. Essential service. Government has asked them to do so, provide service. There is, for example, in my country, there is another thing. That is the gas companies, gas supply for the stores. So they are government organization. But they are there, they are companies, but they are there to supply some important service to the society. Is that clear, Shabniz? Good, now. So the last is social welfare. Yes, sometimes companies exist to provide society some services. They exist there to provide some service society. In addition to, for example, my business, I'm running my business profitably, but I say, okay, I want to establish a school for the poor people, society welfare. So they will study free over there. I want to build a hospital where patient will be treated free. I will pay the university fee of a few students for free. Social welfare. You see, this, this is which is also called corporate social responsibility. Corporate social responsibility is also called. I hope it is clear now. So these are the non-financial objectives of the company. 
these are the non financial objectives of now so students uh, abhi starting the first section of syllabus yes i have told you today the syllabus contents course contents i have told you let me take you to the same page yes here we are what will be the sequence to study the syllabus now just see here we will be doing first second Fourth and sixth. Yes. Now let us proceed further. Notepad is not shareable. You at least this you should note down, okay? Because it will not be easy for me to uh, because it will become too much hectic. Okay, this you should note down. Other things I will be sharing. Okay, now. Thank you. Thank you. Now. Okay, so one thing. If I I am writing something and I change the page, I turn over the page and I go to the second page, and you people still are writing something and you have not written down. Possibility is there. Possibility is there. So you don't hesitate at all to ask me, sir. Can you please go back to the previous page? do let me know in the chat box sir i have to note down i am noting it down or can you please go to the previous page means never hesitate okay now because it may happen corporate social responsibility when society corporate social responsibility that the company the same thing for social fair company wants to give money to some poor people food shelter education medication or any other social welfare you know that work corporate social responsibility now next All right so we are going to start the next section uh, the first section which is investment appraisal now i will ask you a question that what comes to your mind when you read investment appraisal word or listen Yes, please. Tell me. Yes, evaluating the investment we are doing. Whether we should make investment or not, yes, yes, good, yes, of course. Evaluating and making decision whether we should 
whether we should because why why we are evaluating because it is a huge amount when you purchase machinery when you invest in the business it is a long term decision it is not a short term decision huge drain of cash is there got that huge drain of cash and of course if this decision goes wrong it may have going concern implication on the business it may have that's why business so this is this is what i'm saying importance of actually investment why why investment will should be done because such decisions are not to be reversed easily and they are and in, if they are not made properly with proper working with proper evaluation what will happen ultimately losses reduction in the asset values it will be now so students investment appraisal that evaluating whether the investment has to be made or not appraise and appraisal techniques are there of course we will do okay so appraisal before we go for investment appraisals remember companies have a process because it is capital investment big amount so there is capital budgeting process capital budgeting process that if the company has to make long term investment so they prepare some budgets and there is a systematic process so the first of all before budgets capital budgeting process or cycle it is a five step process the first one is the first one is origination of or creation of idea ideas that investment opportunities where we should make investment where the opportunities come from and where the ideas come from they may be from inside the organization i'm sorry they may be from inside the organization that with some your research and development r and d department they develop some product your own department so creation of, for example covid 19 vaccine people are working on it r and d research and development huge amount is being spent research and development the second is from business environment yes that the some of winter season is here we see opportunity of woolen cloths you see we see some problem of society people are not getting time to prepare meal because of their jobs and the fast lifestyle they don't have time to prepare meals so we say okay find a solution for them environment arrange that start supplying that packaged meals are there being delivered to the home so business and environment and from inside the organization you, you know r and d is another example where even your people not not only r and d you every one of us know airbnb it is an idea 
generation of idea is there. And they started working on that. They implemented that. Now, so ideas. After idea, the second is project screening should be done. Project screening should be done. Screening that they are, we are, we created 10 ideas. They came from different sources within, outside. Now, whether that idea fits with over overall organizational philosophy and the mission. Now, Apple, Apple, we know everyone, Apple, Apple, if they get idea of food, that they can start a restaurant, they, they say it doesn't fit with our organization, overall business, theme, etc. With objectives. So screening is done with the weather screening as per organization's mission and objectives, whether it fits with that us or not, and investment appraisal techniques, basic. There is payback period technique. There is accounting rate of return. We will be discussing in detail today itself these four techniques. They are applied. And if the screening test is not passed, we say leave it, leave this idea, move forward some, some other, find more ideas. The next is, third is, that is detailed evaluation. Detailed evaluation is done now. Now detailed consideration. Two aspects. Two aspects. One is financial evaluation through different techniques, through NPV, IRR, and other as well, sensitivity analysis, etc. And there is some other detailed evaluation, other aspect, ethical aspects, whether the project, the product we are going to produce so is ethical, whether it is legal, legal aspects, whether it is environmentally sound, whether it is socially acceptable, detailed evaluation. So financial evaluation plus the other. So detailed evaluation that done. Once we are satisfied with all these evaluations, then what we do? The next is, that is implementation and monitoring. Now we planned, we did evaluation at the start. Now we implement the product. Go, investment, make investment. And then we start, we monitor that as well. Monitoring, continuous monitoring is done. That whether project is moving ahead in line with what was planned, what was what was the initially budgeted? And the next is the last stage is monitoring. Monitoring, yes, that if, if it is more, it should be taken. And the next is post implementation audit. What is it? It is a performance evaluation of the project. It is performance evaluation of the project. Performance evaluation. 
no what is the meaning of performance value that what were the mistakes made what were the new things learned from the product so these are documented so that mistakes are avoided and new strengths are adopted so that mistakes are avoided in future and strengths learned are properly refined and adopted i hope it is clear this five step process is clear i hope so any question anyone any question anyone please Okay, I'll proceed further. I'll proceed further. So students, we will be doing investment appraisal techniques. Investment appraisal techniques they are they can be classified into two types in generally in what are in our syllabus the first one is payback period method The second is accounting rate of return. The third is discounted payback. net present value <clears throat> internal rate of return five techniques are there they are called non discounting techniques non discounting tech they are called discounting techniques what is their meaning i'll explain in a while note it down please then i'll proceed so students let us start with accounting rate of return accounting rate of return arr accounting rate of return arr students you have studied return on capital employed in your 
Yes, rows. It is basically similar thing. Or it is also called annual percentage return. Another name, APR. Three names are used for it. APR. Yes. So accounting rate of return, how it is calculated? ARR is equal to estimated average annual profit divided by average investment. Cross 100. Students, as I wrote here, this is the technique which is profits based technique. This is profits based technique. Profit is utilized. Now, so students, remember this is the only profit. We have five techniques I mentioned in the previous note page. Only one, this technique which is profit based. Now, I will elaborate it with an example. Sometimes you may find initial investment instead of average investment. Remember, average investment is encouraged by examiners. This is preferable. Preferable. You will write this. So where average annual profit, how it is calculated? Total profit of project divided by life of project. Total profit of the project and divided by life. Life means in years, total life, number of years, or number of years. You can say or number of years. And average investment, how it is calculated? Initial investment plus scrap value. Divided by two. Note down that we will solve example only. Note down, please. Now, let us write some example over here. Example on ARR. Accounting rate of return. An example will be here. Yes. For example, initial investment in the project is that is 2,500 million. Project, at the end of the project, life wealth scrap value is, that is 140. And profits of the projects are as follows. Profits. One. Two, three, four, five. Profits of the project. Five, five year for life is there, and profits are as follows 340, 370, 
450. These are the profits of the product. Now, the formula we know, we know the formula. We know the formula of for ARR. We know that. Estimated average annual profit. Divided by number of years, sorry, uh, divided by average investment. Cross 100. So average profit we have to calculate, average annual profit. Yes. Profit, how to calculate? Sum of all, applying the formula. Yes. This to this. So this is basically total profit. Sorry. This is total profit. Not average annual. This is total profit. Yes. Now average annual profit. Equal to this divided by number of years, five. Now average investment equal to this plus this divided by two. You see here, Initial investment plus a crap value divided by two. This is average investment. Average investment is here. Now, so students, accounting rate of now putting the figures in this formula, ARR is equal to average annual profit. Average investment multiplied by 100. So 33.3% is the ARR. Is it clear to everyone? Tell me please. So average investment, I can recalculate, don't you worry. Is equal to initial investment plus scrap value. You see here, initial investment plus scrap value divided by two. Sorry, okay, 1320. It was, it was a mistake, I think. Yes, yes, here it is. Yes, there was a mistake. So it is 28.7%. Yes, thank you. Now, era of the product. Thank you. Now, students, if, ARR of project is greater than or equal to target ARR. We say accept project. What we say? Accept the project. 
or vice versa. What is target AR? Which is decided by the board of the company. That if the company return is this, we will accept the project. Otherwise, we will reject. Target era. Now, next. Let us proceed further. Let us proceed further. Students, we have to discuss some theoretical aspects, but there is one calculation aspect. Sometime in exam, cash flow is given. And we have they are required, they require us to calculate ARR. We know that ARR are profits based. The profit is based. And we cannot calculate ARR from the cash flows. So then how to calculate that? How to calculate that? We need to get our profits first. Can you please tell me what is the difference between cash difference or relationship between profits and cash flows? Any one of you, please. What is the difference? What is the relationship? Yes, please. Anyone out of you people, anyone who can tell me what is difference or relationship between? No, not Jamila like this. It's not like this. Rafiq is right. Yes. Yes. Now, so let us let us learn it. So, friends, when we calculate net profit, how it is calculate? Calculating net profit. We know that sales. I'm sorry. We take sales minus cost, cost variable cost, fixed cost, deduct that, cash expense, then we get net profit. So net profit is calculated after deducting non-cash expenses. Net profit is calculated after deducting. So, what is cash flow? Cash flow is equal to profit plus non cash expense. What has been deducted already, that is added back. Add back that. Is it clear? Tell me. Is it clear? Tell me, please. No. All right, let us proceed further.
let us proceed further. For example, let me write a question here. Another example. Example ARR, yes. Example two on the ARR. Yes. Initial investment is equal to 90 million. Scrap value is 10 million and just focus here everyone cash flows from the project one two three four okay four year are as follows cash flows are as follows for example that is 25 million that is 32 million, that is 41 million, and that is 39 million. These are the cash flows, and they require you calculate ARR. Calculate AR. They require you. How to calculate that? We cannot calculate because these are cash flows. We cannot calculate because these are cash flows. First of all, we need to calculate profit. The formula we learned today, a few minutes ago, that was cash flow is equal to profit plus non-cash expense. We learn this formula. So profit is equal to cash flow minus non-cash expense. Minus non-cash expense. Now, so total cash flows. First of all, we will calculate the total cash flows equal to sum from here to here. So what is non-cash expense student here? Depreciation. 90 was the investment. Scrap value is this. Difference is depreciation. So depreciation is here. Yes, see here, depreciation. It is non-cash expense. Initial investment minus scrap value. Difference is depreciation. Now we can calculate profits. Student, is it clear? This depreciation point is clear to everyone. Tell me, tell me please. Good. Now, next. So, students, profits we have to calculate. They are equal to cash flows minus non cash expense. Here it is profits. For four years are here, total profits. Which point, wherever you stuck, do send me a message in the chat box. Simply repeat, please. Again, wherever you stuck, 
now so average annual profit is equal to total profit divided by life for average investment that is equal to initial investment plus secret value sorry divided by 2 divided by 2 average investment and ARR is here average annual profit divided by average investment multiplied by 100 so 28.5% is ARR So now we have learned if cash flows are given, then how to calculate, then how to calculate profits and ARR of the project. We have learned that. I hope it is clear. If there is any ambiguity, any question, feel free to ask. Now, the next point is, which we are going to learn is, that is some theoretical aspects of ARR. Yes, advantages and of ARR technique. Advantages of ARR, accounting rate of return. What are advantages? It is profits based technique so easy to calculate profits based technique so easy to calculate note it down please so easy to calculate Second, it is most commonly used method by a business manager. Most commonly used methods by business managers. It considers entire life of project. So full life, we take all profits. So X, the next point, expected profit of project can be compared with present profit profitability of business so easy to make decision make investment decision any student i have written four points anyone which you are unable to understand do ask me please 
do ask me please If there is any ambiguity, feel free to ask. Yes. You know, the last point, as we said, last point need to be explained. You know that this is this AR we are calculating, this is expected profit of the business. Future. Because we are appraising investment today, investment to be launched, expected profit is 28%. So what is current profit of the business? If current profit is 40%, for example, if current profit is 40%, what we will say? We say, well, no, we will not accept it. If current profit is 15%, we say it is accepted. So easy to make decision. Can be compared to the current profitability of the business. So easy to make decisions. Now, welcome dear, welcome. Now, the ne next is drawback, disadvantages. Or drawback of the method. Students, it is profits based technique which can be easily, which can be manipulated by business managers. using accounting estimates. For example, this is increasing or decreasing depreciation, profit will change. Increasing, decreasing provision, profit will change. Profit will change. I hope it is clear to you people. The second disadvantage is it does not consider time value of money. We'll explain it in a few minutes. In a few minutes, leave it for the point, this point. We'll explain in a few minutes. At the end. The next is, that is, it is a relative measure. Percentage, answer in percentage. It is a relative measure. So, does not consider size of project. Note it down, I will explain. Now, relative means, I told you relative and absolute today. Relative means in percentage. Now, just see here. Let me explain this point. Project A and project B. Its ARR is 30%. Its ARR is 28%. So, which one should be chosen? Tell me. 
Which one is preferable? Answer is quite simple. A. Exactly. But students. But students. Now just, just now let's see here. Profits. Profit of project A is 10 million. Its profit is 320 million. So AR on the basis of AR, this should be chosen, but only 10 million. So ARR does not consider how much profit is being made. What is size? ARR does not consider that how much investment is made and how much profit is being earned. It does not consider the size of the project. It does not consider. Now, it utilizes average annual profit in the formula, which may not be actual profit in any year, in any year. Note down, I'll explain. Now, just see here, just see here. Here is the example of ARR we solved. We said annual, these are the actual profits every year. We used average profit, average of all. You see, this average is not in any year. It is not occurring in any year. You can see. So the formula is utilizing average annual profit, which is not occurring in any year. You can see. Now, the next. Last point, uh, which I didn't explain. Time value of money. Friend, what is time value of money? Students, today's money has more worth than tomorrow's money. If I say you, you have option, take 1 million today or take 1 million tomorrow. What is preferable today? Why? Because of time value of money. And why time value of money to exist? Why today's money have more value? Three reasons. Because of, number one, inflation. Money will be devalued tomorrow. Second, second, opportunity for investment. Listen, listen, please. I am saying 1 million today or 1 million tomorrow. If you get 1 million today, you can invest until tomorrow, you may make it 1.1 million by earning return. But if you are getting tomorrow, 
that will be 1 million that will be 1 million if you get two day you can invest and increase it till tomorrow so opportunity for investment that's why value is more today and the third one is risk or uncertainty you are sure you are getting 1 million today but tomorrow will you get it not confirmed no idea whether you are going to get it or not not confirmed so risk is there so that's why today's money has moved so time value of money is there this concept of time value of money any question if there is no question i'll proceed towards the point which i left over there the point was that it does not consider time value arr what we are saying we are simply adding all the profit divided by 4 divided by 5 we are not considering it is second year third year and have different value we are not considering that rather we are simply adding and divided by the profit so we are considering that we are assuming in the ar they have same value whether in the year 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 just add them divide i hope it is clear anything you want me to repeat or any question please so then i will keep asking you again and again whether it is clear or not whether any question because there is only one way to communicate in the class from my side to get reassurance from you people now all right so so then these were the advantage these were the advantages and disadvantages of accounting rate of return now students uh, i will be ending class here today in the next class we will be starting with the payback period method so revise all this well at home and do register those who are on trial basis do register by sending a whatsapp message at this number do enroll for the session okay so in the next class we'll be continuing with the next chapter okay the next topic a yeah, payback period that's it for today thank you for joining me take care goodbye thank you thank you thank you bye thank you dear bye